can do sort of the same thing for our trigonometric antiderivatives. So it asks us, what's the antiderivative of sine? Well, it must be something like cos and kx. If I take the derivative of that, though, I get negative sine kx times k. I don't want the negative, and I don't want the k, so I'm going to set a little trap here, this negative 1 over k. Now when I take the derivative of this, the negative that comes from taking the derivative of cosine um, will be canceled by that negative, and when it comes time to apply the chain rule and take the derivative of what's inside, there will be a k, but it will be canceled by that 1 over k. Similar idea here. What has a derivative that's cosine? Well, sine does. That won't quite work. I need a 1 over k. Now I'm good. So these would be nice if someone said, well, what's the antiderivative of cosine 7x dx? You just say, oh, it's 1 7th the cosine of 7x plus any constant. And so check it. When you take the derivative, you should get back cosine 7x. What has a derivative that's secant squared? Well, the tangent does. So let's guess tangent of kx. But if I were to actually take the derivative of that, I get the derivative of the outside, which would be secant squared, evaluated at the inside. So secant squared kx, that part's good. Then I have to take the derivative of the inside, which would kick out an extra k. Let's just set a trap for that k. Now we'll have it. Uh, same thing here, the derivative of the cotangent is the negative cosecant squared. So I'm going to try negative 1 over k cotangent kx. I have the negative here, so that when I take the derivative of cotangent and get negative cosecant squared, this negative will neutralize that. And then when I use the chain rule and take the derivative of what's inside and a k comes out, I've got this 1 over k ready to get it. Let's see, the derivative of the secant is the secant tangent, so this should be secant kx. Take the derivative, though, the chain rule is going to put an extra k in there, which isn't here in the problem. So to take care of that problem, I'll set a little trap for that k. Here we should have negative 1 over k. The derivative of the cosecant is the cosecant cotangent, so we cosecant kx here, plus c. The negative, because when you take the derivative of the cosecant, you actually get negative cosecant cotangent. And this negative's here, ready to neutralize that negative, and this 1 over k is there, ready to get rid of the k that comes when you take the derivative of the inside, which is the derivative of kx, which is just k.